Was the left using this as an excuse to continue censoring people on social media platforms? Joining us now to talk about it is a Republican congressman from Georgia, Congressman Buddy Carter. Great to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So what are your initial thoughts about the, the comments from the Biden administration when it comes to Facebook and actually helping Facebook out when it comes to choosing what particular comments they need to censor? Well, certainly I'm not trying to defend Facebook, but at the same time, this is nothing but the Biden administration trying to deflect blame. If they want to understand why there is vaccine hesitancy right now, if Vice President Harris wants to understand, all she needs to do is look in the mirror. She is patient zero for vaccine hesitancy. Remember back in October, she's the one who questioned the efficacy of this and said she would never take a vaccine that that had been uh, had been approved under the uh, Trump administration. Look, vaccines work. Vaccines are the single most life-saving innovation in the history of medicine. Operation Warp Speed is one of the greatest medical achievements in our generation. I would encourage everyone to get the vaccine. It is safe. It is effective. I would much rather have the vaccine than to have the virus. However, What's going on now with the Biden administration, with Vice President Harris trying to deflect blame onto Facebook, that's nothing more than a cover-up. Yeah, uh, Biden's Surgeon General also, uh, President Biden, I should say, his Surgeon General also claimed misinformation was a threat because lives were depending on it. Listen to what he had to say. Surgeon General advisories are reserved for urgent public health threats. And while those threats have often been related to what we eat, drink, and smoke, today we live in a world where misinformation poses an imminent and insidious threat to our nation's health. We must confront misinformation as a nation. Lives are depending on it. So your thoughts on that? Well, look, again, you can't blame Facebook for this. Mm -hmm. You can't deflect blame. This is a decision that should be made, whether you get the vaccine or not, is a decision that should be made by individuals after consultation with their family and with their physicians. I encourage people to get vaccines. I myself went through the clinical trials to set a good example as a healthcare professional, as a member of the Doctors' Caucus in Congress. I wanted to set a good example. I do believe in the vaccines. However, what's happening here is nothing more than the administration trying to deflect blame on what is really their fault. Vaccine hesitancy uh, exists today because of Vice President Harris and others who were saying that, no, I would never take a vaccine that was, that was approved under the Trump administration, which is simply ridiculous. It is safe and effective. And I do encourage people to talk to their physicians and consult with them to see if they could get the vaccine. So what do you think is really behind this then? And, and we were actually efforting pulling that sound from uh, Vice President Harris because that was obviously during the debates. And, and, you know, she did say that. So is she now going to be one of the ones that will be censored on Facebook, the very thing that they're calling to happen? Um, listen to this uh, before you respond to that. Uh, in addition, this is what White House President said. Secretary Jen Psaki had to say about people being banned from certain platforms. Listen to this. You shouldn't be banned from one platform and not others uh, if you are for uh, uh, providing misinformation out there. They're taking it a step further. And if I guess this administration or whomever determines you should be banned from one site, then you should be automatically banned from multiple sites. You, you know, they they are just so totally lost. And this just goes to show you what we've been saying all along, and that is that big tech is controlled by the by, by the leftist Democrats here in Washington, D.C. They've been controlling them for some time now. We know that conservative voices have been suppressed by this. Look, the First Amendment is not something that you can accept only when you agree with what people are saying. The First Amendment applies across the board to everyone. And to try for them to try to, to cover up and to stop this misinformation, we know that Facebook has been blundering this whole time with, with the virus. You only have to look back to the questions about the origin of the virus. Remember, they're the ones who were taking down off of their platforms any suggestion that the origin of the virus may have come from the, from the Institute of Virology. Now right. we know that that is probably where it came from. And so that opens up a whole nother area of concern because 
um, elements or, or information that you may consider misinformation now could be considered true later, which we've seen happen time and time again, not just dealing with the virus, but dealing with a lot of other issues as well on social media. Um, one of those issues that does continue to get blocked or censored seems to be the results of all these investigations that are happening when it com comes to election integrity in many different states, including your state, the state of Georgia. Can you bring us up to speed as what, what's really happening there? Well, certainly in our most populous county in Georgia, in Fulton County, it is, uh, you know, the Speaker of the House and, mm -hmm. and the President Pro Tem of the State Senate, both good friends of mine, David Ralston and, and Butch Miller, both have called for Fulton County to, to, to look into this. This has gone on long enough, and, and I do call on those administrators in Fulton County. They should be replaced. There's no question about it. Look, this is a problem that's been ongoing for many years, and this is not the first time that this happened. And they need to do a forensic audit. They need to find out exactly what the results were. The people of Georgia deserve this. And, you know, I think it adds to it the recent ruling by the Supreme Court about Arizona. Because in that ruling, it even said that uh, President Jimmy Carter is the one who initially said the biggest problem that we have with cheating comes from absentee ballots. This is what happened in the state of Georgia. This is what happened when last year in 2020, the executive branch made changes to the, to the absentee voting process. Now, thank goodness, our Georgia state legislature has done their job. The legislative branch has passed the Election Integrity Act, which will make cheating harder and voting easier in the state of Georgia. Right. And, and as you have mentioned, it's not just a Republican concern. As we know, in the state of Georgia, Democrats have had issues with what has happened there in the past, in past elections. So if we can get it all together, perhaps both sides can feel confident with our election system moving forward. And that is Absolutely. the bottom line. All right. Congressman. And the people of Georgia and the people of America deserve that. They sure do. Congressman Carter, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. All right. And stay with